Well, supper is approaching. I've ordered some food from the, uh, one of the food delivery services and it's gonna bring me curry to have in bed. Uh, I also am wearing a wool suit because it's quite chilly tonight, um, but this is how I sleep. I sleep in my, well, you'll recognize this. I wear this on stage sometimes as well and sleep in it and walk around in it. That's just how I roll. Matron. Good day to you one and all, it is I, Justin Hawkins, uh, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. Today I'm talking about Fontaine's DC, uh, a band that I've covered a couple of times before. I'm a huge fan of their first album, um, and I've really enjoyed some of the things I've heard more recently. We actually played with uh, Fontaine's DC in Norway the other day, and um, unfortunately didn't get an opportunity to chat to any of them. Um, and had I done so, I would have apologised for being sneeringly dismissive of the singer's football skill. Use the other foot, mate. Go on. Use your left, mate. Use your left. Uh, I'll do an episode uh, on my Patreon about keepy-uppies. you left to excuse my underpants and also the fact that I'm using this log as a iPhone stand. <laughs> Um, anyway, Favourite was released on June the 18th, and I'm going to react to it for you. Justin Hawkins rides again. <gasps> again. Did you like the showbiz uh, vibrato I put on that? No? Was it just irritating? Oh, it doesn't matter. Favourite is the latest track from Fontaine DC's new album, Romance, which is due to be released next month. It's the follow-up to Starburster, which I reviewed earlier to some criticism from fans of the band, particularly for my attachment to Boys in the Better Land. Yeah, slagging me off because I like one of their songs. That's just really weird. Anyway, Connor Maloney, 455. <laughs> Not to be confused with the other 454 or so Connor, Connor Maloney's. Um, I feel you've completely misread their identity as a band based entirely on one song from their first record. You, sir, are bang wrong. I haven't done it, said anything about their identity as a band. All I've done is celebrate one particular song from their first record that I happen to love. And when you set the, the benchmark that high, set the bar rather that high, and then you do something that I don't like as much, naturally, there'll be a negative comparison to the earlier effort that I enjoyed greatly. And guess what? It happens to me all the time because we made a brilliant first album and then a not such a good second album. But do you see me complaining? Yes. Favourite has been described by Grian Chatton, esteemed vocalist of Fontaine's DC and one hell of a sportsman. Well, half a sportsman, really, as having this never-ending sound to it, a continuous cycle from euphoria to sadness, two worlds spinning forever. <laughs> Enough about my marriage. This video features home footage of the band. Guitarist Carlos O'Connell explains, the video is a reminiscing of the past, of each other's childhoods we didn't know. To see people we know on an intimate level as adults in the tender ages of childhood, I get it now. We explore where we came from and who on some level we still are. I don't know what that means actually. It means... It's to, I think it's a bit like that, the Metallica stuff, isn't it? That, it's talking about the formative years, isn't it? And, um, experiences that sort of shape you in your formative years. Stuff like the um, first time you find a slug or um, more vividly the first time you find some discarded pornography which is always in a forest or the first time like you're, you're sort of using a, a shovel to, um, I don't know, maybe you've got some sort of, your dad's told you to dig a hole or something so that he can put you in it. Or the first time someone makes fun of your hair because you've put gel in it and then brushed it over the ears because you're proud of your ears. And then somebody calls them flyovers. The cruelty of that. And a way of honoring our friendships and moving from that to the relationships we hold dear. 
It's been, a, it's been winning high praise uh, from reviewers who have been using words such as masterpiece, <laughs> classic. <laughs> no, I'm not laughing. I'm just remembering something funny from before. Gorgeous and Smithsonian. Does that mean similar to the Smiths? I hope so. Some have gone as far as saying favourite could become a fan favourite. Matron! I'm going to play the song. Here we go. There isn't any room for strangers. If only, oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's a good bit. Well, that comment earlier about Smithsonian, I'd say Curonian. Something in his delivery that reminds me of uh, the affectations of uh, Robert Smith. Like, it's really quite breathy and you can be in no doubt what the words are that he's uh, enunciating. You were my favorite for a long time. Hey, I like the way he breathes through favorite. You were my favorite for a long time. You were my favorite for a long time. That's such a... That is a Morrisseyism, actually, isn't it? So Morrissey often talks about the transient nature of certain emotions that uh, occur to us, and he's always acknowledging that stuff changes. And I'm thinking of Big Mouth Strikes again. Nothing's changed. I still love you. Only slightly, only slightly less than I used to. My love. That's what I'm thinking of. So I'd, so I'd put that down as a Morrisseyism, wouldn't you? Yes. The Smithsonian stuff, I think that's, that's a reach, really. Um, the guitar parts that Johnny Marr used to come up with, I think they're way more complex than what's happening here. Not that, not, that's not what I'm, I'm not using it as a stick to beat them with. I think it's an unfair comparison. Because um, this is a sort of more reductive style of playing. In fact, you, were my favorite you can I mean, I, I'm, I wish I had a guitar with me, but I think when you hear that, the way, the way he's phrasing everything, it feels like he's just moving one finger around the fretboard on one string. You can probably do that with a drone note, um, depending on what key you're operating in. So it's more like sort of the way Billy Duffy approaches the guitar, especially on a thing like She Sells Sanctuary even. I know it doesn't sound anything like that, but I think the, the style of playing's is presenting as being similar. Did he just say faces rearranged? I don't think he's talking about plastic surgery. F probably more like fighting in pubs or, or something. I don't know. I, I need to listen to this properly and carefully. So, shh. Well, that sun shining on you and not even feeling it, what's that? What does that suggest to you? It sounds like depression, doesn't it? Yeah, it sounds like depression. What's that? Shit, that's something. It's, oh, that's really annoying. Fuck, what is that? There's something so familiar in there. Shit, it's gone. Ah, oh, okay, it was there. Oh, it's coming. Matron! Isn't it part of Suede Head? It's gonna be one of those episodes where I say that and then everybody goes, Who's this, you Wally? That's where the Smithsonian stuff comes from, but it's actually a Morrisonian. I'm gonna, I put it to you that it's not Smith's, it's Morrissey's solo work that it's more resembling. Huh, and it took me two minutes and seven seconds to figure it out. <laughs> I'm good, even when I'm tired. You were 
I always enjoy that kind of indie music where there's a driving beat and there's a counter melody being played on the guitar that bears no resemblance whatsoever to what the singer's doing. It forces the singer and the guitarist to go into some sort of duel. Great examples of this is Suede, like the first two Suede albums are like that. Um, who else is good at it? It's usually a rhythmic lead guitar player, like a Bernard Butler type. Um, I think people used to say that about Mick and Keith, but actually, I think there was more it was more of a syncopation. They didn't really tread on each other's toes in quite the same way. But this is, that, this is doing that thing where the singer's got to fight for his uh, place in the aural soundscape. Oh, there's a bit of dissonance in there. It went from a minor chord to the next semitone up major. But there was something, there was something clanging in there, like a... Maybe it's just some overhanging reverb or something, but there's something beautifully dissonant in there. This bit coming up. That note's in there. And it has no place. No, pla no right to be there. And there it is, rearing its atonal head. It's brilliant. I love it when stuff like that happens. Listen to the work of pavement, uh, if you want to hear some dissonant explorations. So, so far I'm getting a bit of Morrissey and a bit of Pavement. And a bit of The Cure. But crucially, I think, not The Smiths. Did you know? Oh, that was a brutal... I mean, a sly tackle from behind, the kind of thing they've absolutely outlawed now in soccer, sports, uh, football. This is a red card offence that we're seeing here. Though. I could watch that all day long. Brilliant. Oh, it's gone from long time to a while. Is this, is this the distance that time, the temporal distance from the relationship that he's referring to? taking some of the emotional resonance away from it. It's something that happens in rapid eye movement, uh, reprocessing and desensitization therapy, <coughs> from what I've read. What did he say there? Misery made me what? The misery made me another, mad mile, another marked man. The misery made me another marked man. So, is that somebody with the curse? Somebody who's not long for this earth. Oh, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, wow. So, wow, that's really dark. I think we're talking about depression. <sighs> shoulder and older, that's a really good rhyme. You don't hear that one very often, actually. I like the way he delivers those, uh, those last, that last kind of double chorus, sort of wistfully looking upwards. Anyway, it's alluring and lovely. It's a, just a lovely little bit of indie with a, a nice poem about depression over the top of it, may, maybe. Um, taking its cues from some of my favorite bits of indie, like Morrissey's uh, early solo career. And, um, what else did we say it was? The, the Cure? I think there's a bit of uh, Billy Duffy from the cult in the way the guitars are approached. Um, great touchstones for, for indie, I think, if you're looking to make something like that. You could do worse than listening to those artists. Um, I take umbrage with the uh, assertion that it's a Smithsonian thing. It's not that. Um, but it is very good. Well done, Fontaines, and thank you to the earlier commenter who urged me to look upon that. Are you happy now? It is done. Justin Hawkins rides again. Again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, watch one of those two videos, and I'll see you in the morning. Night, everyone. Okay.